You guys are probably wondering why I haven't talked about day two. So day two is when the heavens and the earth were separated. And that's really the creation of duality. It's more of a metaphysical issue, so I would suggest that you get a philosophy speaker to come and talk about that. All right. What's a star? What's a star? Is a star a big ball of gas? Everyone who thinks yes, hold their hand up. Only a few hands. Okay. This is a big ball of gas. Is that a star? No. Close. All right. But we're getting closer. Is a star a big ball of gas held together by gravity? Yes? All right. I'm seeing more hands. Good. This is a big ball of gas held together by gravity. This is Jupiter. We're very lucky it's not a star because we would not be here if it ever had been massive enough to become a star. So what is a star? It's a big ball of gas held together by gravity, powered by nuclear fusion. So here's an artist's picture. We have here in the center of the star, nuclear fusion is going on, it's generating heat. That heat is causing an outward pressure force. The mass of the star has an inward gravitational force. And it's the balance of those two stars which keeps the star, gives, gives the star its structure. This is a picture of the sun. I also do solar physics. And Mike Hahn, Mike, would you stand up? This is one of my group members, Mike Hahn. Um, Mike and I also do solar physics. And hopefully Mike will give a presentation sometime in the coming academic year about his solar physics work. So stay tuned. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right, this is a picture of the sun. The sun is a boring star. There's not very much activity. Every now and then it might burp something off the surface, but by and large, we should be happy that the sun is not very active. It makes it possible for life as we know it here on Earth. Uh, there's not much to show. Like I said, it's a boring star, but it's our star. <laughs> We're actually in the process right now of writing an article about how the sun's going to kill us all in about half a billion years. So, you know, don't save for retirement, just spend it all now. <laughs> okay, let me talk about the nuclear fusion that um, formed the elements beyond helium in the periodic table. But I'm going to start with how the sun is powered. The sun is powered by hydrogen fusion. Hydrogen fusion involves a proton, which is shown by the red circle here. It collides with another proton. They come together, and they make what's called a deuteron. This is also known as heavy hydrogen. One of the protons converts into a, a neutron. This gray circle represents a neutron. That's a nucleon that has no charge. That reminds me of another bad joke. A neutron walks into a bar, <laughs> hops up on the bar stool, says to the bartender, bartender, give me a beer. Bartender gives the neutron a beer. Neutron sits there, nurses the beer, finishes the beer, and when he's finished, the neutron says to the bartender, how much for the beer? Bartender looks at the neutron and says, for you, no charge. <laughs> Okay, so we have our deuteron, and it also in the process gives off a, a neutrino and a positron. Positron is the antiparticle of an electron. This deuteron will react with another proton, another hydrogen nucleus, and it will form a, a version of helium that's called helium-3. It has three particles in the nucleus. It has two protons and a neutron. Okay, and it gives off a gamma ray, which is a high energy photon. Somewhere else in the sun, the same thing happens. And now you have two helium-3 nuclei. They come together. They react to form helium-4. That's the form of helium we're used to. It's two protons and two neutrons, and it gives off the extra protons are just spit out. This is the reaction that powers the sun.
So eventually, the sun will use up the hydrogen in its core, and it will not have any hydrogen left to fuse the helium.